Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I wanted to share how I got a radio in my 2004 Ford truck. Um, hey, this is always a subject of contention. Um, it started out as just, all right, how do I get a quick mobile radio in this thing? And ended up, all right, what else do I really need in this truck to do all the kind of stuff that I normally do in my vehicle. I spent a lot of time in vehicles, so for me, um, this was uh, kind of an important project. To complicate things even more, this was a used truck. I picked it up reasonably cheap, but it has a whole lot of miles on it. And when you have a vehicle with a whole lot of miles on it, everything that you put in that vehicle, there's two different things you think about. One, is can I take it out? And two, how much does the stuff cost that I'm not going to be able to take out? And that's an important question. And you got to ask your question, uh, that question yourself whenever you're putting anything in a vehicle, right? If you're going to build a radio built into the dashboard, well, you can't really take that radio out and sell it later, right? So you need to kind of come up with interesting solutions. Anyway, with that, oh, hey, let me remind you, please, if you like my videos, click like, okay? And for goodness sakes, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you on the uh, subscription list. And if you click notify, you can be notified when I come out with new videos, all right? So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the show. Well, okay, so again, every time I'm at a club meeting or something else, there's always somebody that asks me the question about getting a radio installed in their vehicle. And uh, boy, there is no one answer to that. Uh, behind me is a 2004 Ford pickup, and uh, I picked this up uh, just to tow my cargo trailer with when I needed to tow it. It's very high mileage. It's a very old truck. Older vehicles tend to be easier to get radios in, uh, and this one was fairly straightforward, although it represented some additional issues during the installation. One thing is every single 12-volt 12 uh, 12 source inside this truck was on battery, not on ignition. In a lot of cases, that's a real advantage, especially if you're doing amateur radio. However, for me, I run a lot of accessories and things like that that I don't want to have to remember to turn off or I don't want to have to unplug and then plug back in every time I jump in and out of the vehicle. So I really wanted some ignition sourced uh, 12 volt power. Uh, so I needed to get that added. Um, I needed to get a place to mount my phone. I needed to get a place to mount the radio. I needed to get a place to uh, put the control panel for the radio, right? So this became a bit of a project. Now, with every project of installing a radio, you have to figure out what you're going to do with the antenna. And in my case, uh, I decided, since it was a very early truck and it didn't have any side curtain airbags or other things that I would have to work around to do it, I went ahead and installed the antenna on the roof of the vehicle. And as you can see here, there it is in all its glory seen at the center of the roof. Um, you know, a lot of people are really nervous about drilling holes in their vehicles. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I don't blame them. However, something like an antenna that would be a permanent fixture and something that you're going to use, I have to tell you that having it on the roof is a real advantage as far as communications go. Now, it's a fairly arbitrary thing um, once you get the hole drilled, but you have to decide where to drill the hole and how to get the cable through the headliner. Now, I basically found a spot on the roof that was flat and big enough for an NMO mount to get screwed down and attached. And that's where I put the antenna pretty much a did center of the roof. Now, once you get inside the vehicle, you're dealing with headliners, you're dealing with other stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go in how I did that. This was fairly 
easy because, like I said, it's an older truck. Your mileage may vary. If you have side curtain airbags or if you're going to be interfering with airbags at all in running this cable, you might want to rethink it, okay, before you drill the hole. Uh, for the most part, though, there usually is a path down from the, worth, uh, down from the roof that won't affair, interfere with airbags, but your mileage may vary. Just a warning. So where we're basically at at this point is now I've got the antenna ran. I have to get power for the radio. So power for the radio is a little different when you think about it. Uh, I wanted to run power sources off the battery for the radio, but I also had another need, right? Remember, I wanted to have some stuff on ignition and some stuff on battery and that kind of thing. So I ran two separate power sources off the battery. Now, the basic battery hookup was these two... Uh, 12 uh, 12 gauge hookups, excuse me, two 8 gauge hookups, all right, and uh, two 45 amp fuses, both individual. Now, those I connected directly to the positive battery post, and then as for the grounds, you can barely see them up there, but you can see my arrow. I ran them down to where the negative battery cable meets up with the body of the truck. And the reason I did that is there was no clean way to attach these wires directly to the battery or I would have done it that way. But making sure that I had good clean metal surfaces and that I had uh, a, a good tight connection, this is basically set to go and in good shape. And if you notice up there, across the top, you can see that that is where I ran all the wires right across the top. Now, that in itself, uh, the plastic and all the rest of the stuff that I used to wrap this all up with, the whole design of that is to keep the wire from getting uh, hot, damaged by the engine, broken, uh, rubbing against other metal parts. So really these plastic wire uh, covers are really a good idea when you do this. Now, eventually though, I've got to go through that firewall to get into the vehicle. And I was really lucky. You can see where the cable here is running down and running in to the firewall. And that grommet right there, believe it or not, was there and a blank grommet. It was empty. All I had to do was cut a little X in it and run the wires through. I'm going to be honest with you. I probably could have gotten away with 12 gauge, 10 gauge, but I went 8 gauge. Um, hey, like I hunt for bear, right? Anyway, um, simple enough from that point to get them from there across the steering column and into the center of the vehicle where, ironically, I had lots of room to build a center console. Now, you see that black thing of wood there. Um, that was originally open floor because it was designed to fit three passengers in the front seat. Uh, now it'll fit three passengers. The center just can't have any legs. Um, anyway. Long story short, um, I used basically a handheld skill saw, a saber saw. Uh, I cut all this stuff, you know, based on a little piece of cardboard I kind of put up there and fabricated it. Um, and it went fine. Uh, but there isn't, if, if a carpenter walked over with a square, he'd have a heart attack. There is nothing that's square on this. Nothing really lines up, but it fits in the space, and that's what I was concerned about. Uh, and I am not a woodworker, but I managed to do that. This box is just made out of um, simple uh, construction pine, and uh, some, uh, and really, that's it. So it was a very simple box to build an inexpensive in material. Um, anyway, and of course it's held together with several different screws and stuff like that. Uh, but 
this is something that you can build easily. It's not that complicated, and there's probably a lot of guys out there watching this and gals that know how to work with wood. And even if you don't, you know, uh, this is a learning experience, right? So let's take a look uh, at looking into the box, and you can actually see the cables and the antenna and all the stuff coming in through this front section of the box. I actually pulled out part of the center part of the dash that I wasn't going to have access to anyway to give me a place to route all these wires as well as a good place for airflow. Because remember, if you look right there, I have my radio mounted to the side of the box, right? And that's going to get hot when I'm transmitting. Now, you'll see that I've got two different uh, Anderson-based fuse panels on the side of this. And, uh, you know, if you take a look at my power distribution in here, I've got one that's being used for battery, and I've got another one that's being used for ignition. So one is coming directly off the battery into the block. That's the top one. And the bottom one is actually coming through a little bitty relay over there. And that relay is triggered off the ignition switch. So um, when the ignition is on, the relay hits, and I have power uh, on that bottom fuse block. Okay. Why do I want stuff that's battery powered? Uh, or why don't I want everything battery powered? Well, there's little things like phone chargers. And today's phone chargers, you leave them plugged in, they're constantly drawing power. Uh, you've got Garmin, right? That is, uh, it, remember, this is an old truck. So I got a Garmin for a backup uh, camera and stuff like that to throw in there uh, for the period of time that I own it. But I wanted to put it on battery or not on battery, on ignition, so I didn't run my battery down. So that's the reason for the ignition source. That, and I want lots of charging ports and stuff like that, right? Um, and that kind of leads us into taking a look at the cover panel that everything actually is visible on. And there you go. Um, what I have there is I have the mounting section for the radio on the left top and a speaker for the radio on the right top, all right? That big thing that's sticking up, that is for my phone, and that's a proximity charger, right? So uh, that I wanted to have on the key, or the radio I didn't. I wanted that on the ignition. I wanted the choice to shut it off. You see all the stuff, all the little covers there that look like uh, cigarette lighter ports. Well, there are a couple cigarette lighter ports on here, but there's also... Anderson ports, there's also uh, quick charge USB ports, uh, and the quick charge USB ports as well as the cigarette lighter ports are all on ignition, it, with the exception of the one in the center bottom, and that one is actually a push button turn on and off charging USB port. Now, what about battery? Why? Oh, and by the way, the Andersons are all on battery as well. But what about battery for one of these cigarette lighter power ports? Well, um, every other power source that's on a cigarette lighter in this truck is on battery. There was no ignition source batteries. Thus, the reason I built so much power into this, to give me more control over that. Now, this here is the business side of the panel. Oh, and you know, I've got to tell you a funny story. Um, went back too far. There we go. This panel was stainless steel. And when I initially put this thing together, put the panel on it to kind of mock it up, the sun was shining through the passenger window on this. And you know that song, Blinded by the Light? Well, that's what was happening. The glare on that stainless was terrible. And I realized that that might be a driving hazard. So I decided I was going to paint it. And I called the XYL and I go, hey, honey, I'm, I'm going to paint the stainless because it's going to have a problem with reflection. What color should I paint it? And she says, paint it black. And I said, oh, black, huh? Okay. 
flat back or uh, flat black or glossy? And she says, flat. And I said, all right, kind of begrudgingly, but yeah, I can do that. So I decide I'm going to paint it flat black. I go and I get my orbital sander and I just sand that so the paint's going to stick to that stainless. And you know what? When I sanded it, it dulled it down and gave it kind of a neat little look to it and offset all the glare. So I no longer get glare off it. So I didn't end up painting it. I ended up leaving it, but sanded it to where it was uh, basically a matte finish. Anyway, just wanted to share that. So here's the business end of this. This is all the connections that are coming off for the power. Um, they're all coming off on... Uh, uh, little wires and are with Anderson. I believe uh, uh, most of these are either 12 or 14 gauge. I think most of them are 12. I uh, just want to make sure that I have the least amount of voltage drop as possible. That's the reason actually for the 8 gauge as well. It's not necessarily to uh, deliver the power. It's to deliver the power with the least amount of voltage drop and loss. Okay? Um, if you deal with radios and stuff like that, you know that when you key the radio, the battery voltage is going to drop. You're drawing a lot of amperage when you're transmitting. So uh, we all go with pretty heavy duty wire. Anyway, so this was fairly simple. Got all the things in there, tightened them up, prefabricated the wiring, got all the wiring hooked back up and stuff like that. It wasn't that difficult to do. Um, and then, of course, Here's the panel installed, and we basically have four screws, one in each corner. I was going to do a whole series of screws, and you know what? This holds it in. It doesn't vibrate. It's pretty good. You know, it doesn't rattle. It doesn't make noise. This has the radio. This happens to be a quad band Chinese radio. It's a uh, uh, TYT 9800. Um, basically, it is 10 meter, 6 meter, 2 meter, and 440. Uh, I'm only using the 2 meter and 440 portion of it because of the antenna that I have. But all that being said, uh, it's not a bad little radio. It actually is a knockoff of the FT8900 that Yesu sold for years and years that's been discontinued. I happen to have a couple FT8900s, but they're in use in go kits or in my shacks and stuff like that. So... And I had this sitting around, so I thought I'd toss it in and let it run. And I'm happy with it. You know, this truck is, doesn't get driven very often as well. So this was more of a thing that I wanted to make sure that I had a decent radio in it when I was out there and not trying to do it with a handheld and a mag mount. Anyway, um, so with all that, with all the power hooked up, with everything else... Here it is with the ignition on, with it running, um, everything's powered up, and of course my phone's on there and it's being charged. Anyway, that's really all I got. Um, it was a fun project to do. I really enjoyed it and uh, I wanted to share it with you. And I wanted to show you, I am not a woodworker okay I am not a metal guy I uh, you know I, and admittedly I understand a little bit about automotive electrical uh, but hey there's always some place you can get a wire in from the battery to the cab a lot of cars have their batteries now in the back of the car it there's all sorts of different ways you can do this all you have to do is get things apart enough that you can get in there and do what you want to do you know if you don't have a big space in the center hey guess what there's all sorts of additional little pieces and parts that you can buy that will allow you to get a radio in there my goodness in my subaru my my uh, radio control head sits on a little platform and that's what it does is that platform comes off the center console and just comes up far enough that I can access it, right? It's not rocket science. You can do this, you know, you can. Just give it a try. And of course, if you're going to drill a hole, cut a hole, cut something, think twice and just make sure that you're doing the right thing and you're comfortable with doing it. You also 
of course, can go to a automotive radio installation shop. We have local ones all over the place out here, and they'd be glad to put the stuff in at your specification. So that also is an option. So don't be afraid to get a radio in your car. A mobile radio is a good thing to have. Anyway, with that, I'm Stu, and uh, thanks. Well, that's it. It wasn't real complicated to do, like I said, when I was cutting up that wood and stuff like that. Uh, I was just using hand uh, uh, a hand skill saw and uh, a little saber saw uh, and uh, a tape measure to measure things. Uh, and, and believe me, I, I think a real carpenter would probably have a coronary just looking at how poorly the square is on that stuff. But it fits and it looks like it's fitting just perfectly. So from an appearance standpoint, I managed to hide all the things I did wrong, which makes me happy. And a lot of things changed along the way. I had things in my mind that I thought I was going to do a certain way. And as I got farther into the project, hey, guess what? Those things changed. So remember, anytime you take on an amateur radio project, don't have an expectation that you're going to know how it's going to turn out and what's going to go into it when you start over here. It is a journey. Things always change. The things that you think are going to work might not work. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. You can do this. It's not that hard, okay? When you start cutting holes and stuff and, you know, taking stuff apart, you really don't know what's in there, hey, look at a service manual. Go and buy a Haynes manual and for the car. You, it tells you how to take stuff apart. It tells you where things are, so... Anyway, and again, there's always the solution of taking it to a um, audio shop and letting them install the radio and the power and everything else that you want. Considerably more money than doing it yourself. But, hey, if that's your comfort level, no problem. Anyway, with that, I'll remind you one more time. If you like my videos, click like. Any questions or comments, make them in the comments down below, okay? And uh, remember, if uh, you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit that bell icon and say that you want to be notified when I come out with new videos. Uh, I try to keep the content interesting. And hey, with that, 73, everybody, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.